Today we're going to take a look at how to create the uh, observation checklist part of the assessment in inventory. So what I've got showing here is my unit summary. And that unit summary assignment, if you'll remember, gives us a basic overview of the content of the unit. So in this particular unit, it's an intro unit in Dance 1A, just a really basic dance unit. And we're exploring the basic locomotor steps, uh, the directions and levels that we can use in dance. So I have listed here my standards and objectives that I'll be covering within the unit. And then also just a basic summary of what we'll be talking about and in what order. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on my observation checklist. Scrolling down, I'm going to put in a, a page break. And of course, in your document, you probably have your table of specifications coming next. I'm just not showing that here just for sake of time and, and space. So I'm going to start by giving this page a heading. This is my observation checklist. So I'm always going to head my pages with the title of the assignment or the assessment that's being used. Now for each of these assessments, I'm going to answer three questions. When in the unit is this assessment occurring? Why are we doing this assessment? And what are we doing for it? So in the when section, I would write something like, um, this assessment will take place within the first few days of the unit. I could say something as simple as at the beginning of the unit, uh, in the middle, at the end, um, or if I've really gone through and already kind of planned out the sequencing of this unit, I could even say this will take place on day two. It just depends on how much you've already explored this unit in other classes. All right, so again, we answer the question when in the unit this will take place. Secondly, we answer the question why. Why are we doing this? So the purpose of my observation checklist is going to be to assess students' uh, understanding of the most basic concepts of the unit through direct observation. So that's the main purpose. Then I'm going to go into a couple of little uh, advantages and disadvantages here. So uh, the checklist will enable me to see which steps, combinations, and directions students have mastered and which may require some review. So really the point of this observation checklist is to be a formative assessment that gives me a quick view of what my students might need some, some help with within the unit. Okay. Now I say the what. All right, so for this particular observation checklist, what I'm gonna have my students do uh, is kind of space themselves out on the floor. I'll be calling out the basic uh, locomotor steps and combinations that we've learned thus far in the unit, as well as a direction. So I may say something like run diagonally. And so they need to demonstrate that they understand how to run on a diagonal pathway across the floor. Then I can check that off on my little checklist. Okay, so what I do in this what section is basically exactly what I just said. I describe the context of the assessment. So I will conduct an in class activity in which students will. Um, stand throughout the room, and I will call out a step or combination and a direction. Students will then perform the step or combo uh, using the pathway or direction that I have indicated. I will stand at the front of the room with my clipboard and checklist and watch each student to determine if they have mastered both the steps 
splash combos and the directions being called. Students will receive a check mark if they perform the skill correctly. and a zero if they perform it incorrectly. So notice the level of detail I've provided here, and, and I, probably if I weren't narrating this for you, I might go into even just a touch more. Um, I've said the context, so we're doing this in-class activity, I'm gonna be calling out the steps, etc. Then I've also indicated how I'm going to personally implement the checklist itself. So I'm standing at the front of the room with my clipboard, watching the students, checking it off. So that should be the information that you kind of provide to give me the context for your assessment, okay? The next thing you're going to include is the checklist itself. And in this case, what I'm going to use is a really basic table. Let's see, I'm going to go to table, insert table, <laughs> narrate through this for you. Uh, let's see, I want to assess, I'm going to assess a couple of things here. Um, and I'm going to cancel this just so I can show you. Basically, if I go back up to my unit summary and I look at my objectives, my indicators in particular, these are things I want to look for in my checklist. So what I want to see here is that they can perform the five basic locomotor steps, the basic locomotor combinations, and these directional spatial concepts. Those are things I'm looking for because without those skills, I can't really move on in the unit to put together a piece of choreography for my students. So um, I can kind of decide from here how I want to organize my checklist. I could have one column, one thing that I'm looking for, might be the five basic locomotor steps, or I could even list each of these out. Can they walk? Can they run? Can they hop, jump, and leap? Same thing with the locomotor combinations. I could have one column for all three and then kind of have a coding system that says, oh, they got the skip and the gallop, but not the slide, for example. Um, or I could have a separate column for, all, for each one. Ditto with this last one, the directional spatial concepts. So I could have, you know, did they show demonstrate mastery of all of the directions indicated? Or I could go, did they move forward correctly, sideways correctly, backward, diagonal? Okay, so how you structure it's up to you. I'm going to keep it simple just for the sake of this recording. So I'm going to insert that table. I think I'll do five columns and I'll do like ten rows just to be indicative of what it might possibly hold. So this far left one, those will be my students' names. Okay, and then so I could have Doe, John, right? And that would go down from here. Then across the top here, I'm going to have the different skills that I'm looking for. All right, so I'm looking for my five uh, mastery of five basic locomotor steps, mastery of three basic locomotor combinations, mastery of uh, typo okay mastery of uh, four primary directions and then I'm going to throw in here uh, awareness of others space and safety in other words they weren't running into each other I know that wasn't in my curriculum but that's something that's going to be very important as we uh, continue on in the unit something that dancers need to be aware of so I'm putting that on my checklist and that's really as simple as it needs to be. Uh, yours may look different depending on the types of things you're looking for or the way you're implementing it. You may have a seating chart here, all kinds of different things. But this is what mine ends up looking like, okay? So I've got these obvious things that I'm looking for. I've got my students' names along the side. Uh, I may even have one of these charts per student so I can give them direct feedback saying, oh, okay, you need to work on your skipping technique or something to that effect. Um, really up to you, but this is what mine ended up looking like for a quick formative assessment of, and I'm scrolling up here, uh, the objectives that I said I was covering in my unit. So that's how I'm going to do my observation checklist. Now down here at the bottom, I'm going to add four more things. And these are things that uh, you've addressed in your classroom assessment study guide, but we haven't talked about this in class. 
For each assessment that you create, we're going to reflect on those four major characteristics of assessment that we learned about. Reliability, validity, bias, and practicality. All right, so let's take a look at this checklist for a minute and think about how reliable this instrument is going to be. Remember that reliability has to do with consistency. So can I uh, implement it correctly? Is it going to give me a consistent picture of what my students are able to do, etc. So looking at this checklist, um, I'm going to say something like, given that these students will have multiple opportunities throughout the activity to perform each step combination and direction, I should be able to get a fairly consistent picture of their ability to perform each skill. However, it may be difficult for me to accurately observe every student in the class, right? Can I be consistent? Can I see each student every time? Or will I only catch them on the time they're making a mistake uh, for each skill? And students' performance on this day could be influenced by outside factors such as mood, illness, injury, etc. Okay, so those are all factors that have to do with reliability. I'm trying to give them multiple opportunities, and multiple opportunities means better reliability, but I might not be able to see every student every time, which could cause a problem, um, and we could have some outside factors being drawn in, okay? Um, however, one last thing, uh, the criteria I'm looking for are fairly straightforward, so I should be able to implement the checklist consistently. So right, part of uh, reliability is my ability to grade consistently and with a checklist that's pretty straightforward uh, can they run can they skip etc um, I should be able to implement it pretty consistently okay so the second item is validity and validity is all about alignment so this checklist is based directly on the core curriculum for the unit Therefore, it is strongly aligned with what students are supposed to be learning. Okay, so this should be a very valid measure. Uh, I'm teaching them basic loader mo locomotor steps, basic locomotor combinations and directions, and lo and behold, my checklist measures those three things. Okay? All right, bias. Is there a possibility that uh, students will have an unfair advantage or disadvantage um, or that I'll grade them using a bias on this particular instrument. Uh, on this one, probably not a ton of bias. Um, everyone is completing the activity together in class. Um, therefore, no one will have um, additional time or resources that would make the assign assessment unfair. Okay, um, It is possible that I could um, check off a student that I like and not check off a student I don't like. So I can put that there, but I'm not sure why I would do that as a teacher. Why would you say, oh, she doesn't know how to skip when she does just because I don't like her. Uh, so that's in there, okay? 
All right, and then the practicality. How practical is this? For me, this checklist is extremely practical. This is an activity I would do in class anyway. Um, so I'll put that in there. This is an activity I would do in class with or without the checklist. So it is very practical to implement the checklist because it requires very little additional time or effort from me or from the students. Okay, remember practicality in this case is how expensive, how time consuming uh, the assessment is, not how relevant to everyday life. That has nothing to do with practicality in the assessment sense. All right, so that's what your observation checklist should look like when we're all done. You start off with observation checklist. You say when in the unit you're going to implement it. You say why you're doing it and what you'll be doing with quite a bit of detail here. Then you provide the actual instrument, the actual checklist or whatever uh, format you're using for this assignment. And then you reflect on the reliability, the validity, the bias, and the practicality of that particular assessment, this, this particular checklist. That's how you create the uh, observation checklist. When you're done with it, you can bring in a hard copy. You can invite me to your Google Doc. You can submit it through Canvas, however you want to get some feedback on it. And then I'll do the final 